Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Let's talk today about Hugging Face uh, inference. Uh, we'll, we'll show you how to do inference with a Hugging Face fine-tuned model. And the model uh, will be fine-tuned based on uh, receipts data. Uh, and the model name is Layout LMV2. Uh, and this model is designed to be able to extract uh, data from, uh, from the documents. So it's a very useful uh, model for the enterprise uh, because often uh, we face a task when we need to extract uh, data from uh, scanned documents, from images and so on, like from different forms, from the invoices and from the receipts. So in my previous video, check it out, I was explaining how you could fine tune uh, Layout LM V2 model with your custom data uh, to be able to uh, uh, deliver uh, better results when working with your own type of documents. And in this video, I'll show how to use this uh, fine-tuned model and how to run inference. And in, in my next video, I'll uh, also explain another type of inference uh, with the same model when you don't have um, out-of-the-box OCR uh, data uh, available and you could use um, OCR data from, uh, from the model itself. So today let's we'll focus on a situation when uh, you have a document and you have OCR data for this document and you need to classify, you need to assign uh, labels to the fields and uh, you need to tell um, this field is like a total or it's a subtotal or it's a VAT number and so on. And yeah, as always, uh, Google Colab notebook uh, will be available. Uh, uh, the same code is available, available on the GitHub and yeah, let's let's see how it works. So let's jump. Um, this is uh, our uh, GitHub uh, repo. The URL also will be available below the video. And this is uh, this repo contains code, uh, open source code for Sparrow. And Sparrow uh, is the product we are working now, uh, which uh, the idea of Sparrow is to be able easily extract uh, data from uh, various types of uh, scanned documents and present this data in a structured uh, format. So it could be usable for, by the enterprise. So today we are focusing on, let's uh, scroll down on, on this uh, point number three, layout LMV2 inference uh, trained on received data. So what you can do, uh, right click on uh, icon uh, related to Google Colab and open. So th this way we could open uh, the source code in Google Colab and you could run it straight away on your own environment, just in the browser, you don't need to install anything on your computer, you could just run it on uh, on cloud. And if you check uh, runtime type, we are not using any hardware accelerator uh, for this model because it's not uh, fine tuning, it's just uh, inference. And uh, for this demo purposes, it doesn't need much of um, <coughs> computing power. Inference task usually runs uh, fast. So what we see in the notebook first is we install uh, transformers because when when you are working when you are working on a Google Colab session each time when you want to run a notebook and when the session is expired you need to install all the dependencies uh, always uh, uh, you repeat the same steps because it's a kind of new session uh, uh, new Colab session it doesn't have any dependencies so you, you install them so install transformers then install uh, datasets. Uh, this is uh, this is hugging face library then we installed uh, pytorch and detectron and then uh, what we do next we uh, get a uh, uh, core dataset which was prepared by me uh, and this uh, the video posted uh, two weeks ago uh, which explains how you could um, transform an external dataset to be readable as a hugging face dataset and the advantage of hugging face dataset is that the same dataset you could e easily use uh, with Hugging Face API, like for model fine tuning, for inference, and it, it fits very nicely into Hugging Face API, and uh, it simplifies a lot of uh, uh, logic and uh, saves a lot of time uh, for uh, to, uh, in order to use data uh, simpler uh, in different uh, pipelines in on Hugging Face. So we get data set, and we get we get data set here in the new inference notebook because we want to use one of the examples from the core data set from the, um, uh, from the validation uh, split. And validation split wasn't used uh, either during uh, fine tuning or validation uh, uh, or testing uh, to be more precise. And validation data from validation split wasn't used yet. And we would like to get one of the uh, examples from this um, split and try to run inference on top of that. 
Okay, so we got dataset. Then from dataset, we print out um, uh, feature names, and the feature is, uh, in other words, is a label. So there are a lot, uh, around 30 labels, and model was fine tuned uh, with those 30 labels so that when uh, model would get new uh, receipt um, to classify with uh, new data, then it will be able to assign one of those labels to each field. Okay, then the next step we get um, validation split. And this is the uh, column names that uh, uh, that exist in, val in validation split and in other splits like a train and test the same uh, column names. The column names are used there as well. And uh, we get uh, first entry from validation sp uh, validation split zero. This is the first uh, document, first receipt uh, available in the set. And then we print out uh, words uh, from this uh, uh, example, and this is the words that were. Uh, basically by OCR engine extracted from the image, right? And this is the uh, words that uh, exist in this uh, receipt document. And then we print out boxes. Uh, boxes are coordinates uh, that um, correlate with each uh, uh, word extracted by OCR and coordinates describe the location of this word uh, with an original uh, document, in our case, receipt. Then we print, uh, we display the, the document. This is the received document that we are working on. And if you compare the received document with the words that were extracted, you'll see that these words, they correspond to the actual uh, document, actual image. Okay, then we go down and what we see next is uh, uh, we initialize uh, so-called uh, layout LMV2 processor. Uh, processor is a class that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, helps to prepare your data uh, and uh, through the processor you could uh, easily then run inference inference, ta inference task on top of model and uh, all the conversions uh, all the embeddings and so on will be uh, created behind the scenes for you by the processor so what we do here we refer to the uh, processor uh, name and then we say that we are not using OCR because we have uh, boxes and words already from the data set uh, all this data was uh, prepared by some external OCR engine, let's say. And then we create a processor object with uh, image itself, with the words that we want to uh, classify, and then with boxes. So the, uh, the order always uh, is correct, <clears throat> and the first box is matching first word and so on. Okay, then uh, what we do next is... Uh, over here we get the actual model, and now we don't get generic layout uh, layout LMV2 model, but we get <coughs> fine-tuned model from uh, our uh, which was saved under uh, our username Katana ML on Hugging Face Hub. <coughs> then we get uh, ID label mapping that was uh, saved together with the model, and finally we do uh, for inference through a forward pass. So we pass encoded inputs from the processor and uh, and model uh, does classification, assigns labels to all the words and returns back the outputs. And now we want to, uh, in order to display the outputs, we define a function that uh, translates um, coordinates into original values so that they, uh, so those values uh, could match the dimension of the original document. And then we print out from the processor, we can print out uh, encoded inputs. So we can print out all those uh, words that were submitted uh, to the processor. And this is uh, how the words look like. Right. And then we uh, want to extract uh, predictions and uh, boxes that were uh, <coughs> that uh, correlate with um, each prediction. Okay, so then uh, we print out uh, original words that we were uh, and uh, that we were classifying, and the model was trying to assign label to each of those words to which class uh, uh, each each of those uh, words belong, right? Like for example, this fifty thousand. If it's a total, then it will assign label total. Uh, Four thousand five hundred is a change, for example. Uh, then there's some. Uh, uh, like a, a separate item price, like a 13,000, 16,000, 16, and so on. And we print out true predictions, and this true prediction is uh, uh, actual result, actual label that was classified for each word by the model. 
And this is the same thing. We just print out it as a list uh, just to be more easily readable. And uh, these are uh, coordinates that were also uh, returned um, by the model and for, for each of the words. Okay, and then we just display the results. So this is the uh, uh, the same document that we saw before from the example, and uh, then we draw uh, those rectangles uh, around uh, all the words, and we also display <coughs> a label that was classified by the model. Like this one is a total uh, change price, this is a total price, and so on. Yeah, and this is the <coughs> original, uh, if you look into the, uh, into into the data that we were uh, using as input core data set. Core data set comes with the labels uh, already assigned and we can compare those original labels uh, and with the labels that were predicted by the model. In this case, it's, um, prediction is very accurate. It's probably around 95, 96%. <coughs> and uh, prediction is, uh, is, is working great in this case because um, uh, processor, we were passing uh, coordinates and words to the processor, and coordinates were <clears throat> calculated for all, for each for all the words by the external OCR engine. So we are not relying on uh, like a, uh, a Tesseract engine that comes uh, that is used by uh, Layout LM V2 model. We have coordinates from the dataset. So uh, in this case, uh, since the OCR result was great. For layout LMV2 model, it's quite uh, simple to assign correct labels. In my next video, I'll show uh, what results we get when we are not using coordinates uh, from the original dataset and we try to get uh, coordinates from the OCR uh, by layout LMV2 model itself uh, without having coordinates uh, in, uh, in advance. Okay, and uh, the question uh, is, okay, we got, uh, let's say, uh, uh, coordinates, we got rectangles around the words, we got labels assigned to those rectangles, <clears throat> and it seems working fine, but how we can actually get the data? And the answer is simple, because when, uh, uh, when we define the processor over here, let's scroll up, yeah, we pass a list of words, and as a result, we expect a list of, list of um, uh, classified uh, labels assigned to all those words. <clears throat> so I noticed that the order is always the same. Uh, so uh, the order of words is matching the order of the results. So this means uh, if you look into the uh, labels returned by the model like uh, CNT, and M, and M price, and so on and so on, so uh, this order is matching the uh, original input uh, to the to the model, this, uh, the list of words. So this means you could um, compare two arrays and basically uh, from uh, the array of words at position uh, two, for example, you could get um, a label that is classified for this word uh, from the, another array from the results. So this is how you could easily uh, map uh, map or match um, input words with the results uh, because the uh, order of the result is the same. If you're using this uh, order is the same, if you're using to get predictions, this uh, approach to uh, this one uh, from the predictions, if you're using uh, log its um, uh, if you're from the outputs using lockets and uh, with argmax, you're getting uh, basically a list of the results. So if uh, using this approach, then I noticed that uh, results uh, with the uh, predictions, uh, the list of this, uh, the list of the predictions, uh, the order is matching the uh, word inputs, and then it's kind of obvious that you can uh, just uh, match. Uh, the word with the uh, corresponding uh, results. So it's uh, no need to do decoding or parsing and so on. Yeah, so thanks for watching. And uh, with this video, I was trying to explain how you could do inference on top of fine-tuned model to extract data from the documents. And the main point is uh, that you could get um, words original words and labels that are assigned to those words by simply uh, comparing um, two arrays because the order of the input and of the results is the same.
So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.